Okay, so now I've got some references in. I'm going to bring in some new reference for just the head. So I went to Pixabay and I downloaded them from Horned Lizards. Bring those into my folder. Bring them into my photo P. See how it comes in behind there. Can use control T to shrink it down a little bit bigger than my sketch, but about the same size as the other head elements I want to use. And you can kind of tell, I think, that primal Groudon here, the head is a little inspired by a horned lizard. I don't know if that's just coincidence or not, but it's very similar shapes, right? So then, just like I, I did before, I want to roughly cut it out. making sure I have as much overlap for the neck as possible. And then hit Command-J. And then delete the full layer underneath, because that's taking up a lot of memory. Okay, then I can take my other head, and I can kind of put it on top. And I can use Control-T. And I can kind of work out the angle I want. I can use Control T to stretch it and transform it a little bit. And then one thing I find helpful when making the head design is to take the opacity down a little bit and line up the eyes. Not that the eyes have to be aligned, but it, it's a way of kind of lining up the skull and figuring out how you can make this anatomy work. So now that I've lined up the eyes, I put one on top of the other. And then just like we composited the sky together or the landscapes together, I need to now get rid of this hard edge and see if I can blend the one head into the other. I'm not worried about color yet. I'm not worried about lighting yet. I'm worried about placement and edge. So I'm going to use the eraser. I'm going to use it at 100% opacity, right? And I'm gonna change the quality of the tool so that its hardness is at 0% because I want to get rid of those hard edges and make it large enough that I can see what it's doing. So about 60 pixels because I'm at 72 pixels per inch. And then I'm just going to erase that hard edge and let the horned lizard head come through. And this takes care of that soft edge problem I had for the initial head reference. Right. Okay, then once I've gotten rid of the hard edge where they overlap, and notice I'm not really worried about the edges of the creature yet. I'm interested in the internal edges. Now I can take my opacity down on that eraser, just like we did with the sky. And I can start to take it down in little steps, right? So that some of that color and some of that texture still flows through. And then the focal point is the eye. So I might want to work with that. Not worried about the coloring or the lighting. And I don't, I don't have to feel um, obliged to any one thing in the reference. Like I don't need to keep anything that I don't, that I'm not drawn to. This is my own creative work, my own creative decisions. Okay, so then I, I got one other 
reference for the head. That's this guy. And mostly I wanted this for the horns and the eye ridge, even though it's posed slightly differently. So I'm just gonna circle around that with my lasso, hit Command J. I can turn off my guides for now. And then delete what comes underneath. Now, this is where all those skills from the last project come in. I like this eye more, and I like this little thing, but I might internally composite it. So I might take this horn. I don't want the out of focus one in the background. I just want this one. And I don't really like the angle it is or the size it is. So I'm gonna hit Command J and make a new element of just that horn to play with. just so that any um, zoologists that see my work don't immediately recognize the frills and the ridge as just being exactly what a horned lizard is, right? So I'm gonna add my own. And then for the eye, notice that it's really dark. So before I wanna line it up, maybe I wanna do some quick image adjustments. I'm gonna play with the levels. So you can do this at any time, now that you know how to use these tools. And I'm on the wrong layer. Gotta be on the right layer. Image adjustment levels. Because sometimes you have to play with the lighting just to see what you have to work with, right? I can increase the highlights and the midtones a little bit. I have a lot of good pixel content there. And now I might want to play with the color a little bit. So adjustments go right to hue saturation because I want more color. This is fanciful. And I'm going to really saturate it. See what color is there in the eye. And I like that, that kind of crimson red eye. But I can't push it too far, right? Or it just doesn't look believable. And I'll lose the, uh, the values. But that's the eye I want. Now I can go to, but maybe it's too purple, right? So I can go to color balance and I can just shift the temperature a little bit more towards the warms. Less towards the green. in the shadows and the highlights and the midtones. But I still want a diversity of color. I don't want it all to be monochrome. All right, because we want to build our creature like it's a, a versatile model that we can put into any environment. So we don't want to put it with any particular kind of lighting. We want kind of default lighting. Now I'm gonna take that eye, I'm gonna copy it and delete all the rest. Take that eye, take its opacity down a little bit. Hit Control T. Transform it. Shows me where it should go. Do I want it to be cartoonishly large? That's an option I have. I think I want it to be a little bit larger than what's anatomical to the horned lizard, but should still look believable. Right? Oops. And we're just repeating these same steps over and over. So just like I did with the horned lizard, now I'm gonna use the eraser at 100% opacity. That's important. 0% hardness, large enough so I can see it, and get rid of that cut edge so that I can blend it in.
Okay, now that it's in place, maybe I want to play with its lighting adjustments a little bit more. So if I go to levels, now I can increase the midtones a little to kind of match the lighting on the rest, and then even deepen the shadows just a little. And then maybe I can even dodge and burn it. So I'm getting a little bit of digital noise in the pupil. So I'm just going to burn that down. But remember, when you use burn, you want to use less than 30 as your exposure. And now maybe I want to bring out a highlight in the eye. So I'm going to dodge, just reviewing these tools that we used last class. And I'm just going to bring up a highlight. I'm not painting. I'm just bringing up, uh, lightening the pixels that are already there to kind of work with the lighting. And that will make the eye, which is the focal point of the head, a little bit more interesting. And these are all on different layers, so at any time, I can play with the opacity of them, turn them on and off. All right. So I think that's working pretty well. Now I want to play a little bit with the color of the mouth. And I do all of this before I cut out the edges. So let's play with levels. Let me just make it a little bit more contrasted. Now let's go right to hue saturation. I actually want to deaden the saturation just a little bit and maybe change the hue just a little bit. Kind of push it both ways, see which way works. That looks good. And now I can sh shift the color temperature with color balance. I'm just going to move it a little bit more towards purple in the midtones. And then in the highlights, maybe a little bit more towards green. And then I can use the burn tool at a low exposure, less than 30. I can make it soft because I'm not doing a highlight in the eye anymore, and big. I just want to burn under this jaw a little bit to kind of match the lighting of the eye. OK. And then lastly, to finish off the head, it looks like he has a black eye still, but I'll fix that. Um, I want to go to the horned lizard. Everything should get worked with just a little bit. And I want to adjust its levels. Now knowing what's going to be seen. And I can make the lighting and the colors work a little bit better. And for the most part, those levels are pretty good. So now go right to hue saturation. I want to bring some color into this, but then I want to shift it a little bit, a little towards the reds. And then I want to play with the temperature. And here, a horned lizard is just like sand color, right? So here I want to shift the highlights towards the warm with red and green, but then shift the shadows towards the blue. And that will give a little bit more dimension 